Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am here for my June favorites. Summer is halfway over for us anyways, because I measure summer by the school year. So it is halfway over for us. We start at the beginning of August. What can I say? Time flies. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all, I do not have a ton of favorites this month. I am not someone who's going to make up favorites for the sake of filling a video. Some months I have an exorbitant amount. Some months I have four or five. I think I have like five or six. And really only one of them is makeup related. I have a fragrance, a couple of skincare, and one very random, but I think everybody in the world needs to know about it. So let's start out with the one makeup product that I'm gonna talk about. And this is going to be shown in an upcoming Playing With New Makeup video that's coming out next week. But I had to talk about the fact that I really do love them. This is the brand new gel bronzer that was just launched from Jones Road Beauty. They sent me two shades and a brush. I really like this brush too. This is the Everything Brush. Um, but I have only used it for the bronzer, but I'm sure it'd be great for cream blush and foundation. Maybe that's why they called it the everything brush. Probably. Anyways, I have tried gel bronzers in the past and a couple of them, I can't honestly can't even remember what the brand was, but I remember trying them and felt like they blended out to nothing. And they were very pretty upon like a swatch, but I could not get a good coverage on them to where I felt like I didn't need to cover them with another powder bronzer. Not the case for this at all. Again, they sent me light and medium. I'll swatch both. I have been using medium. I have used it probably three times now. And just like I said, I do not feel like I lose coverage out of it. I don't feel like I need to top it with a powder bronzer. The actual color stays all day. I don't get the patching off on my forehead like I do even sometimes with cream bronzers. It's really pretty. And so far I've only tried it as a bronzer, but I'm very eager to mix it with a foundation see how that works. I'm eager to kind of use the light shade, very sheer-like as a kind of a veil primer underneath a foundation. Seems to be a very versatile product, but again, I have been using it solely for bronzer and loving it. So the medium color is gonna look super dark, but again, that's what I've been using and loving. If I were to put it all over my face, I would use the light, but this is the light, obviously, and that is the medium. You need a very, very, very small amount. A little goes a long way. And it just, it really works. If you like the idea of not using a powder, if you like the idea of trying something other than cream, I would definitely say give these a shot because so far I have really been enjoying them. Now, let's talk about the one perfume that I wanna talk about. And this is not the only one that I have been using, but it is by far the one I've been using the most. And it's because it has become my favorite mixer. I think I did some kind of video this past month where I used this with my Javoy Touche Finale perfume as my fragrance of the day. And I mentioned then that I have been using this a lot with stronger florals, not because I don't love my stronger florals, but to give it a little bit of a softness and a sweetness. And this is by Keese Perfumes, and this is Delicia de Marshmallow. Definitely not the first time I have talked about this. Definitely not my favorite bottle, okay? This is, it's basically a stock like square bottle and it's got a sticker on it. And then it says Keys Perfumes on the back. But I don't even care because it's not overly expensive. You do get, how many mils? I don't even know, it's not on the bottle. I'll put it on the screen. But you do get a lot of product and it smells heavenly. And this is what it says it is. It is a fluffy vanilla marshmallow. Oh my word. So what I have been doing is I have been taking, like I said, my stronger florals, my Javoy that I just showed you, my Memo Maduri. I only have a decant of this one, but this this is my favorite with it. The um, Matier Premier French Flower. Oh my goodness, it is like to die for heavenly. I love that combination so much. My Lila Lou by Rosie Jane is gorgeous with this. Today I have on my Amouage Guidance with the keys. So basically I will use the same amount of perfume I usually do as far as sprays go with whatever scent I choose for the day. And then I will add two sprays of the keys, one on each arm. 
and something about it, it's magical. So if you have something that maybe is a little too strong for you, um, maybe you want to cut down with a little bit of sweetness, fluffiness, it's not like so sweet it's going to make you gag as long as you stick to those like two sprays. If you go more, it might overpower what you originally sprayed, and that's not the intent, at least when I use it. It's just to add a little bit of something to those scents, and I have not stopped using it. I think, honestly, I think I've used this every single day of this month. It's so gorgeous and so fun to layer and make your own scents. All right, let's talk about two... Oh, you know what? This is kind of makeup related. Let's go back to makeup a little bit. This is the new lash curler that launched at Refer. Now, it looks like a lash curler, right? And it is, it's a lash curler. But what I love about this is they came out with two widths of these lash curlers. So this is the one that is a little bit wider, which for my eye shape and the way my lashes grow is very needed. But if you have smaller eyes, they came out with, with one that's even smaller, which I love that option. I also love that you get, oh goodness, I think it's four replacement pads, which typically you don't get that with other curlers, you get one. So you're gonna have to, you know, buy another curler sooner. But this is great, it is intense curling okay it does a very good job at the curl but i love the width because like i said my eye shape and especially on this eye i have lashes that really like to grow all the way at the very edge and they almost grow down so i need something that's going to be able to grab those lashes and curl them effectively and this does it i love it very very much and highly recommend it so i will link that down below and in the theme of lashes, I will go on with my first skincare product. And this is something that I have been meaning to share for months now. And one thing that I accidentally left out of my nighttime skincare routine, which is coming up next week. So it's even more important for me to include it here, but it is a new lash serum that I've been trying. Now, if you have followed me for any amount of time, you know that I am a huge fan of Revitalash. That has not changed. I love Revitalash, but I had been getting a lot of DMs and comments asking if I knew of any prostaglandin-free lash serums. I do not have an issue with prostaglandins. Like they don't, they have not done anything to my eyes over the years that I have used Revitalash. Like some people claim that they do, but you never know if you're gonna have a side effect for anything until you try it. So some people don't even wanna give that a chance and I respect that and appreciate it. If you are someone that doesn't mind, the Revitalash is so good. And like I said, I've been using it for years. But if you are someone that wants something prostaglandin free, I can't recommend this one enough. And it is called Scoro Lash. Now, I think I saw like, I don't know, an Instagram ad pop up for this brand. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll look at it. And you know, if you even open the comments of something like that, then that's all you're gonna see <laughs> on your feed from there on out. So I purchased it, I think it's like $34.99. So it's definitely more affordable than the Revitalash. And this works, like it works. And I can't say if it works from the very beginning or if it just works in maintaining whatever lash growth you already have because I was on Revitalash for years before this. So it's not like I went in having never used a lash serum, tried this and said, oh my goodness, my lashes went wild. However, I have changed to different lash serums in the past from Revitalash to try them out and I felt like my lashes regressed. They were not near as long. I did not have the maintenance that I had with the Revitalash. This one, I have not had any regression. It has, really maintained my lashes. And when I say maintained, it's like, I have not used a Revital Lash in like three months now. This is my second container of the Scora Lash container, you know, tube, whatever you want to call it. And I really, really, really like it. I have the Jane Ardell mascara on today, but I think you can tell like, I, my lashes are, are not hurting because of using this. So if you are someone who maybe wants to make the switch, definitely check this out. If you're someone who's never used one, check this out. Or if you're using another prostaglandin-free one, I would still check this out because I have used other prostaglandin-free lash serums and this is by far my favorite. The other skincare product that I have just absolutely been loving, I'm I do talk about in my nighttime skincare routine, but I had to talk about it here too because it's been a favorite find of mine lately. And it is the Pi Skincare Century Flower Mist. I saw this on a video that Caroline Hirons did with the 
founder of Pi, and they were specifically talking about this formula. I have tried other things from Pi in the past, but I believe they were mostly cleansers, like maybe an actual cleanser. I know I've tried their oil cleanser, but I hadn't gotten into any kind of serums or anything like that. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try this because it is specifically made for normal to dry, sensitive and redness prone skin. Now I do not have sensitive skin. It is pretty normal in the summer. The winter, it gets a little more dry, but it is redness prone. And I feel like that it had become more red throughout the past three or four months, which I've, which I've spoken to in plenty of videos in the past three or four months. And so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna try this and just see. And y'all, it is so good at knocking out redness. I have distinctly seen a reduction in the redness in my skin since I have started using this three weeks ago. I show in that video, but the mist is divine. I hate to even waste a mist, but I want to show you. Y'all, that's one spray and I just wasted it. So my perfumes now have century flower water all over them. I only need one spray because that mist lasts forever. And I basically circle it around my face and I'm good to go. I use this as, as my toner step morning and night now, and I cannot speak highly enough about this. If you have redness prone skin, I, I just can't recommend it enough. Definitely give it a try. I would love to hear what you think. The reviews are amazing as they should be. Now, other than my random, that's gonna be it. So let's go ahead and talk about my random. And it is random. I do talk about food items here every once in a while. So maybe it's not that random, but this is a gadget. And it is a gadget that has been worth every single penny to me since I have gotten it. And it is the Ninja Creamy. Now, apparently this went viral. I am not on TikTok. I cannot bring myself to do another social media platform. I just can't do it. My mental state cannot handle it. So I am not on TikTok. However, a very good friend of mine is, and she told me about this Ninja Creamy and how everybody's talking about it and how you can't find it anywhere, but she was able to you know, purchase hers right before it sold out and this and that. And I'm like, what is a Ninja Creamy? We were shopping at Trader Joe's when she was telling me this. And I'm like, what is a Ninja Creamy? I have never gotten more excited about something so fast when she told me about what this is. And it is basically a home ice cream maker. But when I think of home ice cream maker, I think of the ones that, you know, I had when I was little that you literally had to manually churn and the blades like moved in this big bucket looking thing. No, it's not like that. Okay. We, we are in... 2023. <laughs> that was from the 1980s. I'm going to put a picture of it. It looks like a little bit, it's too big for me to like hold up, but it's a little bit bigger than like a Keurig machine. It's kind of that same tall, narrow type of look. And it's a home ice cream maker. It has buttons for gelato, milkshakes, sorbet, ice cream, light ice cream. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I have only used light ice cream. My um, daughter did the sorbet one or smooth, I think they have a smoothie bowl one too. She did that and she loved it. But this is it. I don't, I'm not a huge ice cream eater, okay? I try to eat, yes, I'll go out and get ice cream every once in a while, but I try to eat really as clean as possible. And so I have been making protein ice cream in this thing and I cannot speak highly enough about it. I basically will take almond milk or cashew milk or whatever milk I am using at the time and I will put in my protein powder. I will also sometimes use the pre-made protein shakes, the super coffee protein shakes I really like, but they only have 10 grams of protein. So I'll add like half a scoop of protein powder in with it. And you stick it in the freezer for 24 hours after it is completely frozen for 24 hours, you put it in the contraption, you click it up, you mix it. Now here's the thing, if you have one or if you're gonna get one, I'm gonna tell you a trick. I run it one time, it takes about two and a half minutes. I add about two or three tablespoons more of milk because it's gonna look very powdery. And then I run it a second time. And y'all, it is legit ice cream. You can also do a mix in. Um, so every once in a while, I'll put in some like those Lily's baking chips or the Swerve baking chips. I'll do like some chocolate chips or I'll do um, like some pistachios because I really like salty sweet. And it's like a blizzard or a blast. It's so it is so good and it's a whole pint. So I basically sit down and eat a pint of ice cream versus drinking a milk a protein shake, which I have gotten to a point in my life where I don't even like drinking those shakes. They, it just, I don't know. I think I've, because I've done it for 20 years and I'm just tired of it. 
it's just good. And now if you're a re regular ice cream maker, definitely by all means do that. It comes with a recipe book full of ideas that I will eventually get to, but right now I'm just stuck on my protein ice cream. So I had to talk to y'all about that and let you know how much I have been loving it because I do use it pretty much every day. So I will have that and everything else linked down below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. Let me know what your favorite item has been this month, discovery or rediscovery down in the comments section below. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.